This is the second in our video series on basic nozzle knowledge, and this video covers flow rates. Flow rate is clearly an important factor in any spray nozzle. Typically, it's gonna be measured in liters per minute or liters per hour possibly cubic meters per hour as well. The units are very important to get right and consistent, obviously. The first thing to note, this is a volumetric flow rate rather than a mass flow rate, and that can also be important to remember in some calculations. So what affects flow rate? Well, there's three main factors that we'll consider here. Firstly, the most obviously, the size of the orifice. Then there's pressure. Flow rate will vary with pressure, and we'll look at that relationship. And then also the specific gravity of the fluid we're spraying, so if we're not spraying just water, we're spraying something else like an oil or something, it will have a different density, so that will reflect flow rate. How do we calculate flow rate at different pressures? Well, each nozzle will have a specific K factor. Now, this is a constant that is specific to that nozzle. And in metric units, the K factor is defined as the flow rate in liters per minute at one bar. Now you can have K factors in different units, so it's very, very important to make sure we were looking at the K factor in the right units. Once we know the K factor, we can actually calculate the flow rate of a nozzle at any given pressure. We can use this formula here, with K being the K factor, that's specific to that nozzle, Q being the flow rate we want to calculate, P being the pressure in bar, and N being an exponent that is specific to the nozzle as well. For most nozzles, that exponent is going to be 0.5. So the formula can be rewritten as Q equals K root P, 0.5 being the square root. However, some nozzles have a different exponent. So that exponent can be 0.43 or 4.46, and that can make a difference. So it's important to understand the exponent specific to that nozzle. But for most purposes, it will be a root relationship with pressure. If we know the K factor and we know the exponent for the nozzle and we know the pressure we're spraying, we can now calculate the flow rate relatively easily. Good news is, is that the nozzle manufacturers will produce a spray flow rate charts for each nozzle and they'll let have done this calculation for you in those charts. But if you want to calculate the pressure at a very specific pressure that isn't listed in the chart, so say the chart gives the pressure for two bar and four bar and you want to calculate it at 3.5 bar, you can now use this formula to actually derive that flow rate. The next factor that affects flow rate is the specific gravity of the fluid. So all of the data sheets that you see will be calculated with all of those flow rates on for water. If you're wanting to spray a fluid with a different specific gravity, with a different density, then we need to adjust those flow rates accordingly. And this can be calculated using this formula here. We have SG1 is the density of the fluid with the flow rate Q1, and SG2 is the specific gravity of the fluid with the flow rate Q2. So if we know the flow rate for water, and we know the specific gravity of water is one, we can actually simplify this formula to this. So now Q2 is the flow rate we're looking to calculate. Q1 is the flow rate that we know for water for this specific nozzle. So we can look this up on the charts or we can calculate using the previous pressure flow rate calculating formula. One is the specific gravity of water by definition. And then SG2 is the specific gravity of the fluid we're trying to calculate flow rate for. We can plug that all into this formula and then we can actually adjust the flow rate for the different fluid. Steps are first we calculate the flow rate for water at the given pressure and then we use this formula to adjust it to get us a flow rate for the oil or whatever it is we're actually spraying. So that's our video on flow rates and how to adjust them and calculate them for, di for different nozzles and different fluids. I hope you found that useful and in the next video we'll be looking at drop size and factors that affect drop size.